Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at one type of isomerism which is structural isomerism. So one of the important things to do is to be aware of the definition of this type of isomerism. And structural isomerism is defined as compounds which have the same molecular formula, the same numbers of atoms, but have different structural formulae. Now these differences can involve different chains, different functional groups, and different positions of functional groups. Let me show you what I mean as an example. Okay, so for example, let's consider the possible structures that we could have with 5 carbons and 10 hydrogens. Now because we've only got 10 hydrogens, this means we must have a double bond in the molecule or something else that's going to take away two hydrogens. So here are some possible examples. We could have five carbons in a row and we could have the carbon-carbon double bond between the first two carbons. Okay. We could also have Once I fill in the rest of the hydrogens, we could also have five carbons in a row with the double bond between the second and the third carbon. Okay, that's another possibility. Because there's no way I'm going to fit that in otherwise. I'm going to put that three there. Okay. We could have a molecule where we've got four carbons in a row. And we have a carbon on a branch. We can still put the double bond there. Hydrogens. All over the rest of the molecule. So those are some possibilities. We could also, if we were feeling really original and creative, we could have five carbons in a circle. This time with single bonds between them. This is called a cycloalkane. And these also can exist. And so when we think about these four possible isomers, and these are by no means the only four isomers of C5H10, but they are four possible isomers. There are some things that we can look at. Okay, if we consider these two isomers, the difference between them is the position of the functional group. Okay, it's gone from being between carbon 1 and 2 to between carbon 2 and 3. If we consider these two, the difference is, sorry, excuse me, is the chain. So in this case, we've gone from having five carbons in a row to having four carbons and a branch. And if we consider the last possibility here, the difference is actually the functional group. So we've gone from having an alkene to having a cycloalkane. Okay, so these are all examples of structural isomers. So when we consider ways to draw the possible isomers of a molecule with a given molecular formula, so the molecular formula is like C5H10 and the structural formula is formulae are the different diagrams that I've drawn. The best advice I can possibly give you is to be as systematic as you can. So you start off and you draw five, five carbons in a row, for example, and you start off the double bond in the first position, and then you move it to the second position, then you move it to the third position, and then you move it to the last position. Some of those will be the same thing. So you need to be aware of that. 
but once you've drawn the straight chain ones then you go okay well now what if I put one carbon here on a branch and now I can move the double bond from the first position to the second position to the third position and then maybe I can do two branches but you have to double check that maybe I can draw a different functional group so maybe I can shift the functional group around there are lots and lots of different possibilities <laughs> but you just need to be incredibly systematic the other thing to be really careful of is the fact that these molecules exist in three dimensions, which means they move. Now let me show you what I mean by that. So some molecules might look different. If I draw this molecule, it looks like one thing. I can also draw it like so. And you might be inclined to think that this is actually a different molecule. Because you're thinking, well, one of them's got like a CH3 group of it, and the other one's got like a double bond to CH2. But all I've actually got here is that I've drawn this bit, which is the same as this bit, just around slightly. See, so here I've got a double bond to CH2, and here I've got a double bond to CH2. Here I've got a single bond to CH3, and here I've got a single bond to CH3. So either way, really, what I have is I have four carbons in a row with a double bond at the start and a CH3 coming off of the second carbon on that chain. It's exactly the same thing. Looks different, granted, but they're actually the same. It's just a different way of drawing it. The most important thing to remember when we're thinking about organic molecules is these things don't have 90 degree bond angles. They have 109.5 or even 120 degree bond angles when we're talking about double bonds. And they exist in three dimensional space, which means they can rotate, flip, twist around, be turned upside down, back to front, left to right, etc. But they stay the same molecule because they're existing in three dimensional space and they are always moving. Okay, so let's have a look. So that's all I need to say about is just structural isomers. Now the other name for structural isomers is constitutional isomers. And that is well worth remembering. So remember, these are molecules that have the same molecular formula, the same numbers of atoms, but they have different structural formulae. Okay, thanks guys, and I will see you in my next video.